So a number of people have asked me about my uh, workstations and I often see lots of stuff in the background so I thought I'd just do a quick video to uh, show you how I set up my paint station. So this is not my uh, model building station, this is purely my paint station. So we start off here with uh, uh, just a uh, normal portable um, uh, airbrush uh, spray booth. Uh, again, bent out the back, those uh, filters are very, very efficient. Um, and uh, as you can see uh, down here, I also have my uh, airbrush uh, cleaner system. So there's my uh, compressor setup. Um, it's an on-demand compressor, so uh, it's only running when uh, you're drawing uh, uh, air from it. And as you can see, I've got uh, four four uh, outlets from this because uh, I have um, multiple uh, airbrushes. Um, also have the hair dryer there, uh, one of my old wife's old ones, uh, which I actually use to um, uh, dry off when I'm when I'm trying to paint lots of or big spaces, you know, in a short amount of time, because the hair dryer then uh, starts to uh, dry that paint quicker. Workhorse airbrushes, uh, Badger Patriot uh, 105. Um, I also have a Badger uh, Sotar uh, 2020, uh, sorry about the glare, for fine work. And I also have a Harder and uh, Steambank uh, Evolution. So, you know, do you need four or five airbrushes? Absolutely not. It's good if you're painting multiple colours. Um, but uh, really, it's just. Um, uh, just something I'm into, uh, but just a decent uh, Badger 105 like this one. That's 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 the workhorse. I tend to use this for more of the um, uh, more uh, dangerous um, and thicker paints and uh, enamels like all clad, uh, etc. So also a couple of things you might not necessarily uh, expect to see, but uh, pledge uh, floor care finish. Um, and this is a really really good acrylic uh, varnish self-leveling uh, works beautifully you can uh, spray it straight through the airbrush uh, and good to go and we also have a big bottle of Windex uh, which you can use to and which I use to thin my uh, uh, acrylic paints uh, this bottle here is uh, isopropyl alcohol um, and that's uh, good for thinning uh, obviously alcohol uh, based paints. Last but not least we have uh, distilled water and again uh, this is good stuff for thinning and cleaning because uh, it should have no uh, impurities in it. Now moving along to the uh, paints themselves um, if we start at the back here I've got the uh, micro uh, flat so the microsol uh, colors there um, in fact, I've got all the Microsol set. This is a Microsol mask, so um, really good uh, going forward. Uh, some Liquitex Flow Aid, and what that does is it slows down your paints if it's drying too quickly. So uh, you know, that's whether you're painting with an airbrush or with a with a paintbrush. Um, if you want to move the paint around a little bit more and not have it dry quickly, then uh, Flow Aid is the stuff you need for sure. Um, then I've got the rest of the uh, Liquitex um, uh, meat, different mediums, so matte medium, blending medium, glazing medium, uh, and soft body uh, medium as well. And then in the front here you can see we've got some uh, Vallejo uh, game colour. These are the air uh, versions, so again anything with the black top in Vallejo is, uh, doesn't need to be thinned, it can go straight into the, in, into the airbrush. So these game colours with the grey top, uh, they're ones that do need to actually be, be thinned. I've also got um, surface primer. Uh, so again, everything that's plastic needs to be primed and uh, I find Vallejo to be very, very good. Again, uh, these products that I'm actually putting on here, are clearly I'm not sponsored by anybody or anything. These are just what I find works for me. But you have to find what works for your for your for yourself for sure. Um, so if we keep going around here, then 
I've got the Liquitex uh, inks, excuse me, inks, and uh, these are uh, exceptional, uh, highly pigmented uh, colours, um, which are really, 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 really good. And you know, if you get one bottle, it'll last you for forever. So here's carbon black comes in a squeezy bottle, so it drops out nicely and and good to go. Next up at the back here we have uh, a range of old clad paints and so these are really really good for um, metallics you know so whether you're doing uh, shiny chrome or you're actually you know doing engines of uh, aircraft or, or even locomotives whatever uh, works works really really well um, they've got their own uh, primer and base color because you, you you spray over a gloss uh, base um, and we've also got um, the varnish is there to go over the top as well um, obviously that stuff is uh, a little bit more uh, potent than what you find with acrylic paints so uh, due caution needs to be uh, taken and uh, regardless of what you're spraying uh, you definitely you know even with the uh, with the airbrush um, uh, spray booth you definitely need to get one of these one of these ones that's rated uh, you know g70 here to uh, to deal with you know asbestos levels so you know I see on the internet all the time people saying well it's acrylic and it's not poisonous so don't worry about it any airborne particles are going to be bad for you so invest in one of these you get used to it really quickly in terms of uh, um, it being uh, comfortable uh, to wear so make sure you wear one of these and do not trust those people on the internet that are saying acrylics are water based so it doesn't matter any airborne particulates can uh, can kill you and um, so uh, definitely invest in, in one of these, one of the big box stores, not too expensive, but you know, damn cheap when you're talking about your health. Invest in all clad, well, this is the sort of finish that you can uh, actually achieve on, uh, on plastic, you know, chrome finish, stainless steel, aluminium or aluminum for our North American friends. You know, um, you can't get these kinds of uh, paint qualities with normal paints. So, you know, yes, they're more dangerous for sure, and you've got to take care of them, and they will stink the house out, uh, even with the extractor. Um, but if you take due caution, you can get some spectacular uh, metallic results. So here we've got some yellow top uh, MIG uh, paints. So these are ones with the agitator balls inside. So if you shake them, you, you get the little ball bearing goes around inside and mixes them up really quickly. That's good. Uh, we've also got some uh, washes here from Vallejo. I mean, you can make your own washes obviously, in which I do, but it's, uh, it's often good to get a color uh, straight out of the bottle if you're in a hurry, for sure or if you want consistency over time. Also got my airbrush uh, flow improver there and as you can see uh, just on the top uh, a range of different uh, different uh, glues. Moving to this side more Vallejo paints uh, again if you recall black tops mean that uh, they're the air ones so they can go straight into your airbrush and the white top ones um, they're uh, for uh, they they do need mixing. Okay, so lots of Vallejo, lots of ammo by MIG. Sorry about that. Ammo by MIG, but I also have uh, Tamiya paints, as you can see uh, in the corner here. So uh, Tamiya paints are excellent for spraying. Don't try to use them though with uh, um, through uh, with with a paintbrush uh, because they just do not paint uh, well at all. Here. We've got uh, panel line accent colors as well, black and, and gray. So those are good for, um, look at those uh, um, you know, seams that you want to accentuate, uh, which is, which is kind of key. And then right in the back, I've got a bunch of uh, weathering powders uh, as well. And as we pan around to this side, then uh, you can see my uh, airbrush cleaner uh, which is important because everybody knows that uh, a dirty airbrush uh, stops real quick um, but these here are my games color uh, acrylics um, so we've got washes at the back uh, and then a bunch of these little pots with some uh, really nice paints in um, which are kind of 
very flexible for whatever you you want to use so airbrush cleaners we talked about you know clean your airbrush uh, regularly uh, certainly after every painting session for sure and I've also got some uh, badger reg dab uh, needle juice uh, which also assists in uh, lubricating the uh, the needle in your airbrush and finally here we've got some uh, Humbrol mask oil which is really good for masking off those um, uh, smaller areas I think uh, where you're not using blue tech or uh, Tamiya uh, masking tape or any other masking tape that you prefer um, what else uh, well I guess finally the uh, the last thing that uh, of interest here maybe is uh, my wet palette so this cost me about two dollars uh, so uh, what you've got here is just a you know from the dollar store a little plastic airtight uh, container and we've got uh, sponge underneath followed by parchment paper again don't use baking powder paper it's parchment paper uh, which sits on the top and um, you know if you're painting with brushes uh, you know it's it's a must-have because it keeps your paints uh, wet and flowing and you can come back a couple of days later and your your paints on your palette are still uh, usable which is kind of cool so you'll see at the back uh, also that there's a range of uh, brushes and uh, to be honest all those brushes that are standing up with their uh, brushes painting upwards um, really these are just brushes I've collected over the period but that is not the way to store your good brushes so um, my good brushes uh, you know proper uh, Kalinsky uh, sable brushes uh, you always store them this way up uh, and you always keep these plastic covers on them to protect the ends if you store them this way up after you've cleaned them uh, what tends to happen is moisture you know obviously with gravity comes down this way it sits in the ferrule uh, you know loosens the the glue that holds the um, the um, uh, sable hairs in place uh, and eventually will rust so you always clean and store your brushes in this vertical position with your uh, brushes facing downwards um, okay what else can I show you uh, well we have uh, oil brushes uh, as well so these are fantastic from uh, ammo by MIG so these are already thinned uh, oil paints which are fantastic for for weathering if you haven't tried those out yet I would definitely uh, uh, suggest that you do so I've also got paint pens uh, that we use these are earth tones uh, again um, you know very very good for doing uh, um, spot stuff uh, I mean these are from testers again you get a range of different colors but uh, for weathering this is uh, this is uh, excellent uh, for sure and uh, yeah a big uh, roll of Kleenex I guess is the uh, is really the uh, the last thing you need because uh, you know painting can get messy uh, but certainly clean water dirty water you know always keep that separate from your your cup of coffee uh, for sure uh, because uh, drinking some of that stuff is is, is not going to be good um, masking tapes I uh, exclusively use these Tamiya ones uh, it's very rare to get uh, a bleed underneath them so those are uh, really really uh, excellent and um, yeah I think uh, that really is uh, my painting desk uh, uh, in a nutshell I think what I can do is maybe uh, next time look at my building desk and um, for actually creating and, and building uh, models uh, and we can see the difference but I keep my paint station separate so I hope you've enjoyed that uh, just a brief look around my uh, paint station uh, any questions stick them in the comments below thanks for watching